Hi, I'm Ellie Glazer, founder and director of the Surveya Solution, where we're revolutionizing the way the world looks at weight loss. Thanks for joining this week's video podcast. I came across an article recently that says, forget diets, eat intuitively. So I have one word response for that. Wrong. So I certainly agree with the first part of the headline, forget diets, right? That's something that we speak about often and you know, passionately here. We're not about dieting. We're not about crash weight loss. We're about changing our relationship with food to develop a method to sustain a healthy body weight for the rest of our lives, which really means changing ourselves more than changing our weight. And if we do that, then our weight will change in a conscientious and a consistent way. So why do I have such an issue with intuitive eating? Well, theoretically, it makes sense. And certainly it's you know appropriate for those people who don't need dieting, who don't struggle with their weight, who don't struggle and have challenges with making the wrong choices at the wrong times. But certainly this article is written not to those people, but to the hundreds of millions of us who are either you know, habitual or career dieters. So why doesn't it work? Because intuitive eating is not an asset, it's a liability when it comes to ourselves and our intuition. It's broken when it comes to food. Now that doesn't make us bad people. Like I said, just one of the hundreds of millions of inhabitants in this world who have a difficult time distinguishing between hunger and appetite, between telling the difference of what our body needs versus what we feel like eating or how we feel like acting with food at that moment. So when it comes to food, our intuition is more about indulgence than sustenance. If we just let our intuition guide us, we usually end up just feeding our feelings instead of nourishing our body. It's certainly not a formula for conscientious and, consist and consistent weight loss and long-term change. So the author listed several steps of how to really apply intuitive eating. And these are those. She said, take time deciding what to eat. Okay, that makes sense theoretically. Listen to cravings. Now, this is how she describes this part. Our bodies tell us what we need. This is where cravings arise. Have you ever woken up and had a strong urge to eat something, perhaps eggs? It probably means we're in need of protein. Or perhaps you crave greens or something else. This is our bodies speaking to us and telling us what we need. Now, I've been in this industry for 15 years. I've worked with thousands and thousands of people, either directly or in the context of you know, group work or speaking in front of audiences. I've never heard the word craving associated with greens, except maybe mint chocolate chip ice cream. So it's certainly important to distinguish between preferences and feelings. Right? We can certainly have, and it's important to respect our preferences in regards to what we enjoy. Deciding, making decisions within our food plan. If I don't like cantaloupe, I prefer oranges, that's great. Or if I don't really you know, stomach broccoli so well, so I'll stick with spinach or green beans. We want to respect our sensitivities. And certainly if we have allergic reactions to foods, but those are preferences as opposed to feelings of how we feel at that moment about what we should eat, what we're in the mood for, right? Mood eating, that's intuitive eating, and that's what doesn't work. And then she says, really continue, distinguish between nutritional and emotional cravings. Stop eating when full and only eat when hungry. So theoretically, they make sense, but I'm telling you, it's impossible to do at that moment. That's why the conveyor belt that moves the success of the Sovea solution is a plan, is having a food plan, a, a responsible and customized food plan. Because if we leave it to the momentary impulses and desires to determine what we want, to act on our intuition, right, to crave eggs, right, we're not going to choose the eggs because we're really not craving eggs. We're craving something that's going to make us feel full, that's going to satisfy indulgence, or that's going to comfort us at that moment. That's why we have to distinguish between impulsivity and responsibility, between what we crave versus what we need. Because really, once we like open up that refrigerator door and don't have a plan and just try to figure it out at the moment, ad hoc, it's like, you know, trying to lasso a locomotive. It's trying to play tug of war with an NFL linebacker. You're not going to win because the feelings are already taking over and controlling us. But we can control it if we have a plan. And that's what the 
Sauvé solution is all about. So in short, intuitive eating doesn't work. Our intuition is broken when it comes to food. It's not an asset, it's a liability. It doesn't make us bad people, just one of the hundreds of millions in this world who need a plan and direction and guidance with so many things in life, like we all do, but specifically in our relationship with food. Because if we fail to plan, then we're just planning to fail. But if we take care of our food plan, then the food plan will take care of us. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.